So we got these cabinets about four months ago and they didn't all fit in the house very well. They weren't easy to work around. So we brought about half of them inside and out of what's inside, we've separated it into, uh, these go in the bathrooms. There's our islands. Those go above our fridge and our stove. And that one's just big and we don't want to move it yet. The other half is under this big orange tarp because that's where we've been keeping it all throughout winter. all winter. Yeah, the next time we do this, cabinets come quick. They come quick and they're easy. So we're just gonna hold off until we till we know that we're gonna be ready for them. Well, we uncovered these big expensive tarps off of our cabinets and they are mostly okay. But there's damage to this one on the lower, but it's not even water damage. That may have happened when we got them received, but because we didn't catch it, it's, it's our problem now. And then water did get under those really nice expensive tarp and then got trapped behind the plastic that was wrapping them. And so we have some definite water damage on a couple of the couple of the units. It's pretty bad, it looks like. This is a bathroom cabinet. You can tell because I wrote the word bath on it, but mostly you can tell because there's a big giant hole here. There's no top drawer, meaning that a sink is gonna fit in here. That's what all the room is for. This is just a nice little square cabinet, but the back is solid and that poses a problem because this has to go up against the wall. I'll show you why that's a problem. These three things have to be protruding through the back of that cabinet and this clean out as well should probably be accessed. So not a big deal. What I'm gonna do, measure from the wall. And if I cut a hole from seven inches to 17 inches, and that's down, if we went up from the floor, uh, 18 to 23, and I'll measure this one too. So now transfer these onto the back of the vanity, and we'll have ourselves a hole that will fit around this. Starting a hole with a jigsaw. I don't think it's very safe. I did it. Oh, shoot. It's a little nerve wracking cutting holes in brand new stuff. All right, let's get this in there and see how it fits. All right, dramatic baby, get in here and be dramatic with me. Can you give me a high five on camera? Where is it? <laughs> so now it's just a matter of attaching this to the wall and we have another little piece to put in here. Oh. Look how strong you are. <laughs> Jeez. Careful, there's a box in your way. <laughs> Do you want to get the rest of this and pretend like I carried it all the way there? Uh, wow. Oh. Whew, that was a long walk. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> I'm so good at carrying cabinets and using pocket knives. Here's an example of a wall of cabinets. This door broke off, so we'll have to fix that later, but otherwise this is basically what it's gonna look like. Upper drawers, lower cabinet doors, and there are three units sitting here, so we can pull actually independently. They're independent of each other right now. We sent these off to my friend Dennis who builds cabinets, and he put these flanges here on. And what this does is it makes these much sturdier. We are going to do the rest of these cabinets ourselves, but we made these. They're gonna slide right into here, just like that. And we'll drill them in from the front and the back and the sides. 34 and a half, and it should be the same back here. Take out the drawers, the top drawers. Take off the door. See the, the face frame here. 
and it's all not together. It's not level with each other. We got these cabinet specific clamps and they clamp in two dimensions, directions. One is we can bring them close together. Before I tighten that up too much, they also bring the faces flush, but also you'll notice they're not level either. So kind of have to do all three dimensions at once, you know, up and down, side to side, back to front. And then you can do the same down below. So now when I release this, technically it should be good to go. Oh yeah, that worked out really well. These are all together, locked in place with screws. Uh, now it's time to level all the way across. If I take my six foot level, I don't have, I don't have a longer level than this, so this is what I have. It's level there. And it's level there, and it seems pretty close to level here. However, something's off. I'm going to use this laser. Can you see that, Evelyn? You put a laser on it. This is the highest point of the whole cabinet. So I'm going to get the rest of them level to it. And if I put a stick over here, okay? And then in the middle here, you can see it's up to the top. And over here, it kind of dives down again. So essentially I'm gonna go through and shim these up this way. And that's one plane. The other one is back to front. We have a fortunate situation here, as far as I'm concerned, in that the front is lower than the back all the way across. Not ideal, but that means I, I think I can get away with just shimming the front and it'll raise it up. We'll see how level it ends up being after that. I think normally we would use wooden shims. They tend to crush under a lot of weight. I got a couple boxes of these plastic shims. They're very strong. They'll never rot. They don't have any of the weaknesses that wood has. They are more expensive. That's one downside, but they're really nice shims. So there's no rocking in the, in the straight line that I have and the level is reading level. I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna call that good enough. That leveled out just fine. That got perfectly level. That's perfectly level too. Wow, this one isn't perfect, but it's really close. So that's just lucky, by the way. I don't know how to necessarily level the back without just raising it up and screwing it in. So you'll see these red lines on the wall. Behind this drywall, where these red lines are, there is a, uh, there's a two by six all along here. And there's one right here too. This is the top of one of the two by sixes, and that's running along the wall behind the cabinets here. These are called blocking. And in the framing video or somewhere, I know that I showed you guys that I did put blocking in. The reason these two by sixes are here is so I can screw the cabinets into the wall and have something to bite into. I don't have to find studs now. Again, not my idea. I think everybody does that, but. So if you look in the back here behind this, these cabinets came with these holes here. And I measured these and made sure that the blocking is right behind these holes. These little screws, the head goes right through that hole. So it would not, it wouldn't hold this. So what I have is. If you don't want to spend the money on some CTX or just bigger headed screws, put normal screws in, maybe put some washers on them or don't. I'll just show you. Those work just fine too. Now, before we installed the upper cabinets, we had to install the countertops. So that'll be its own video. Stay tuned. But that's what we're doing here in order to get the right height measurements for the upper cabinets. I built this stand or holder or whatever it is. Just a two by four thing that is at the level that we need to set our cabinets on. It didn't need to be this long or this big, but I didn't want to cut perfectly good two by fours. We don't have a lot left for us anyways. Danny's going to steady this and probably hold the cabinet in place. We'll figure it out as we go along. Danny, can all you right. push it towards me at all? Yeah. A little, like half an inch. Right there, stop. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm not apparently. You look really good. Thank you. Yep. So there's six screws holding this into place. They're smaller T25 screws. 
I might, to finish off the cabinets after they're all hung, switch over to these gigantic screws with a larger head. Essentially, we just repeated that process all the way across the wall until all the upper cabinets were hung. Here in this pseudo glamour shot, you can see the final install it looks pretty great. You can see here the shims that we will be cutting off and covering that toe kick area with trim later. There's also a glaring problem, which are these. The screw heads that we used to install the stiffeners are showing very prominently. I thought these were going to hide under the lip of the countertop, but as you can plainly see, they are definitely not hiding at all. We will be coming up with some sort of solution, probably spackling paint for now. So we're gonna give you our top three takeaways. Number one, if you order from Home Depot, they're gonna deliver fast. They know what they're doing. Don't think, okay, it's gonna take a long time because they're really big. No, they'll be in right away and then you'll have to figure out what to do with them. Number two, so we picked 18 inches as our cabinet height, but there's gonna be like a Goldilocks height for everyone. I am very short. I don't like my cabinets very high, but also I have like a bread maker and I've got a KitchenAid. Those are pretty tall. So you gotta consider what are you putting underneath it and how high do you want to reach and how easy is that for everyone in your family. 18 inches is pretty standard for everyone, but if you want something custom, that's just something to keep in mind. Final takeaway, in terms of DIY, I would give this a three out of five. It's not that difficult. I had never done it before. With the right tools, a little bit of research and a friend, you can definitely pull this off. You got this. So in our next video, we're gonna be going over how we install these countertops. Can't wait to see you there.